Kia ora, and welcome to another segment of Organic and Artificial. Organic and Artificial is just um, discussing God's Word through um, organic through God's Word and artificial through man's prophecy. Here today to answer our questions and, and share God's Word with us is Minister Joe Hunt. Welcome Minister. It's a huge honour to have you here joining us again, once again, with your um, making time for us. And with just that being said, we'll just bow our heads and open us up with a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, first and foremost, glory to you, Lord. Thank you for just a wonderful day of blessings. Uh, thank you for bringing us here safely. Please allow the Holy Spirit to fill this room, Lord, so that um, someone out there, as well as us, may learn something new and may draw nearer to you, Father. Uh, please fill us for our sins. Um, in Jesus' most holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for the welcome. Um, once again, it's a privilege to be here. And uh, straight to our topic, um, we're just going to base our topic on mostly the questions that we got this week. It's based on the law. As we know that uh, most and many churches uh, believe that the law is done away with. The law is in the Old Testament. and then, uh, But other churches, they do hold on to the law. But tonight we will discuss and discover what God says about His law. So our first question... Um, Hi, can you just read off our first question that's going to be on the screen, please? So, question one. If my church can't save me, why go at all? Yeah, that's a good question there. Because um, we all know that churches, sometimes they put it out there, you have to come to church, and church sometimes put themselves before the Bible, and some churches put themselves before the Lord. But it is true. The church can't save you, can't save me, even my church can't save me. Yeah. Nothing else can save us, but it's only one name that's given into men, and that name is Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And John saw him as he walked, and he said, Behold, the Lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. Yeah. So yes, it is true, my church can't save me, but the question is, why go at all? Now, did you go to church, uh, Lizzie? Yeah. Oh. Why did you go to church? Because I believe it's the Sabbath. The Sabbath. Well, see, people have all different reasons to go to church. On Sabbath, I asked some of the kids, and they said they just want to meet their friends. Some mm -hmm. of them, oh, you must be one of, like, they used to be, like, to show off the new haircut, eh? amen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, or show off the new suits and the new wear, but, uh, it's a good question, why do we go at all? So let's just say what Timothy says. But if I tarry long that a doe mayest know how thou altars to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. Which house is he talking about? He's talking about church. church. Now the word church comes from the word ekaleo, means to be called out. Church means people. And the house of God, which is the living church of God, the pillar and ground of what? The truth. See, I Amen. used to be Catholic. I love Catholic. I, that doesn't mean I don't have uh, compassion or I don't feel for the people. Because the people are not bad. It's just where their understanding is. And that's where the belief is. But... It's good for me to go to a church that holds the truth. We all know the truth. Jesus is the truth. The Bible is the truth. And the law is the truth. And we're going to touch on the law today. Why go to church at all? Why well, I want to go to a church that Jesus went to. Because if I was uh, born a Christian, be baptized, and I have faith in Jesus, I want to go to a church that Jesus went to. Or follow what Jesus did. And, and, and John, can somebody read that, please? He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. A lot of us say, yes, we know Jesus. Oh, I've heard about Jesus. I have a relationship with Jesus. 
But do we truly walk as he walked? Do we truly follow the steps that he has uh, taught us? Do we really follow the message that he's been delivering? Do we truly walk the way he walked? Because John said, if you know Jesus, you abide in Jesus, Jesus, then you've got to walk as he walked. Because also it says, Jesus is holy, so we've got to be holy as well. That means we've got to be sanctified. And then, um, sorry, Joe. yeah, it's so, interesting you say that just with that um, previous verse that um, a lot of people pick and choose. Um, they say they walk like Jesus and act like Jesus, but in reality, they're picking and choosing what they want so they can match their lifestyle. And it's, I guess, no different to when I was not in church. I picked and choose um, what I wanted to do. And you also hear the saying, come as you are. I'm choosing how I go to church. I'm choosing what I want to do in church. I'm choosing how I act. I'm choosing how I believe in God. And it, it doesn't match or um, uh, relate to how this verse is that I must be like Jesus and um, act like them, especially on the Sabbath day. Can we have an amen for this? Amen. I, I truly reflect on what Junior is saying that, you know, See, there's a, it's a 50-50, right? It's correct in one way, come as you are, come, come naturally. But it also, it's a, it probably is another way to deter you from how to come to Jesus. How to, you know, what, when he said the first word that we used to be, but if I tarry long, don't may know how to ought to behave in what? In the house of God. See, yesterday I went to Sabbath, and and when as soon as I entered that place, I always feel the presence of the Lord. Yeah. See, and we are lucky, because if we ask how Jesus went to church, or if Jesus went to church on a Sunday, like uh, what a lot of people do, no offense, but let's ask the Bible and see what Luke said. Can somebody read that, please? And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And, and as his custom, custom was, he went into the synagogue, synagogue on the Sabbath, Sabbath day and stood up for to read. You know, you're lucky, me and you, because I went in a car. <laughs> Amen. Eh? Mm. <laughs> None of us, I don't think, in New Zealand, you walk to church unless you live next door. But we all go in cars like, mm. but Jesus, he walked to church. But he's, the key word here is said, as his custom was. So Jesus didn't go to church on uh, one sabbath day or choose and pick only the few sabbath days of the month but he went to church or the synagogue every sabbath day amen, amen. so oh uh, did you go to church yesterday Ty? yes amen you're following us what jesus did yes. so amen. we know jesus we abide in him and we walk according to what he did he went to church on the sabbath day sorry to say this but if jesus was here he will have worship with us because he went to church on the Sabbath day. Amen. Amen. If Jesus was here, he would go to church on the Sabbath day. And we all know what the Sabbath day is. It's the seventh day of the week. Amen. 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 The Sabbath day is not the first day. That's not true. It's not biblical. But the Sabbath day is the seventh day of the week. Amen. Amen. Now... This is the problem that we will face and what a lot of church people that go to church on Sunday might face. Because Matthew 7 verse 21, um, can you read that please, um, Lizzie? Uh, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. See, Amen. where does that verse come from? It's not from a nightclub. Oh, trust me, no, you don't go nightclubbing and have the eight percent and say, Lord, Lord, Lord. No, you don't cheer the Lord, Lord on the nightclub or the rugby field. Amen. Amen. We say, Lord, 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 at church, and then Jesus continue on to verse twenty-two, please. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. See, they use the name of the Lord. What day is he talking about? When the Lord comes, they say, Lord, Lord, we prophesy. That means the message. In your name we cast out devils. 
your name we've done wonderful works, miracle healing in the name of what? Jesus Christ. Oh, but unfortunately, verse 23, these are Jesus' word. What does he say? Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in the good See, all your life you went to church. I'm trying to bring this forward because Jesus went to church on Saturday. And I'm not telling you that where you at now, you're bad. No, there's a lot of flocks out there. Sunday church, whatever church, Catholic, Mormon, Methodist, Congregational church, AOG, any church. And when they hear the word of Jesus Christ, they will hear my voice, the word of Jesus Christ, and they will follow him. Yeah. But a lot of people will say on that day, Lord, Lord, we prophesy your name. We've done wonderful miracles. But Jesus answered and said, I never knew you. See, all your life you've been honest with your typing. You went to church and you believed in something. Like I always tell my people, just because a million people believe in it, that doesn't make the truth. Mm. We have 7 billion people in this world and about two-thirds of those people believe in Christ. But that doesn't make it the truth. What's the truth? The Bible says Jesus went to church on Saturday, on the Sabbath. And I don't want to be one of those people that I am faithful to my belief. I went to church. I am honest. I am good. And Jesus turned around and said, I never knew you. Amen. And then what he said? Depart from me. It's a command. Get away from me. You that work iniquities. That word comes from the root word lawlessness. Which means they don't keep the commandments. They don't keep the will of God because they live in the flesh. They mm -hmm. lust through the body of flesh, but not through the spirit of Christ. That's in the book of Romans 8. And then we come to question 2. Can somebody read the question 2? Jesus consistently mentions uh, the keeping of the law. How much do we benefit from keeping all of God's law? That's a good question because he said all. Because <laughs> <laughs> let's just ask, what law are we fighting over? What, what's the main law are we fighting over nowadays? The fourth commandment. Amen. The fourth commandment. What's the fourth commandment? Keeping the Sabbath. Keeping, remember, and that's the only law that God said, remember. <laughs> Where? Not your hands, your, your fingers <laughs> or anything, but here. I had a friend that wanted to be a doctor. But he had three other friends. I won't say all Samoans, but then they had a test. The other two came in and the doctor said, what's this? And he said, no, what's this? And he said, feet. And the doctor said, no, pass. And then the other one came in and the doctor said, what's this? It's your mouth. What's this? Your eyes. He said, no, pass. And this Samoan man come in. What's this? Your eyes. Your ears. Fingers. And he passed and he comes out. Oh, you made it. How'd you know? How'd you get it? It's all in the lungs. <laughs> See, we don't want to be like that. There's a reason why we keep the commandments. Because we know there are benefits. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus consistently <coughs> said, mentioned, the keeping of the law. Why? It's so important to keep the law. Mm. The law is talking about the law of God. How much do we benefit from keeping of all of God's law? Because they also say in 2 Peter verse 10, if you break one of them, you break all of them. I might be really remembering Sabbath, I go to Sabbath, being honest of Sabbath alone, but I still, I still break the Sabbath. Because you have to keep all of God's law. And Jesus also, when he walked, he went to church on Sabbath. And that's the main law that people are fighting over. I ask you a question. Are we allowed to kill? No. no. Yeah, somebody told me they had um, missionaries come to his house and then they said, the Lord's done away with. <laughs> and then he went and sharpened his machete and then he sharpened, why are you sharpening your machete? You said, ah, I thou shall not kill. That means you said, no more problem. I can just do you here and <laughs> because the Lord's done away with. But no, Jesus said, there's a benefit of keeping the law, and that's the law of God. Let's just go to the scriptures. Can somebody read John 12, verse 50, please? 
And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. See, your commandments, the law, is life everlasting. The third truth, your righteousness is everlasting, thy law. The Ten Commandments is truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. And why is it important to keep the law? What are the benefits? In Revelation 22 verse 14, it reads out. Can we all read that please? Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Well, I never said blessed the sister that do. Well, no. It blessed are they that do his commandments. Amen. Amen. Blessed are they that do his commandments. What commandment? The ten commandments, not just the Sabbath. All commandments. See, the first three is about you and God. And then the fourth commandment is the heart. To know who God is, the relationship with you and God. And then the sixth to the tenth, that's the relationship between you and your neighbor. Five to ten, sorry. And blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life. And may enter through the gates into the city. It doesn't say church. But it say them. You and I. Us watching. Blessed are you that keep the commandments of God. That we may have the right. It is our right to have the tree of life. It is our right to make it into heaven. It is our right to enter through the gates. That's the right given to us through who? Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So, is it the benefit for us? Uh, what, what, what sort of benefit do you, you know, like keeping the commandments? It's, it's, it's it a heavy burden or, or, or is it like, it's it a load or something when you keep the commandments? Because some people say it's hard. It's just like, I can't quit smoking. It's hard. Same as, can't quit smoking. It's hard to give up the alcohol. Is it hard to keep God's commandment? I, I think it would be hard. If the law doesn't match what I want to do, Amen. You know, if, if I want to keep smoking and you know, if I want to keep drinking, it's very hard because my actions doesn't match the law. And I guess that's where people tend to think it's very hard to keep the law because, for one, I don't want to follow the law, and two, I don't want to give up drinking and smoking. So it will be very hard. Yes, amen. It's hard when you hit something that you really love, amen. amen. <laughs> Even though if it's wrong, but you still love it and you like it, that then when something tells you, do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not what lie, or false witness, bear false testimony, but you love spreading the gossip, it hurts because it hits the thing that you love the most. Amen. So it's hard, and it's but it's not a burden. When you keep God's law, it says in the book of John, it sets you free. Amen. See, like us, when you know, when in the times of the dawn raid, now they're just starting to apologize. Thank you for apologizing to our people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're starting to apologize for our great grandparents and the parents. Where they come in, just rip them and tem take them back home. It's, why? Because they were sitting there and they were breaking the law of New Zealand because they didn't have the visa, they didn't have the permits to stay lawfully in this country. So when you break a law, like when you see an immigration officer or police officer, you shake hey, and you sweat because you've broken something. It's the same thing as God's law. You don't have freedom, you're not set free if you break one of God's commandments. But i tell telling you, how many times have you broken the Sabbath? Amen? Yeah. How many times have we broken the Sabbath? Well, I'm telling you now because a lot of us break it, but we do not understand. But I, unfortunately, there are people out there that know what Sabbath is, but they still break it. But thanks to the Lord that we live in a kingdom of grace that He still loves us. Amen. But I'm telling you, He's not going to strive with you forever. There's a time that you will be standing in that judgment seat and He's going to answer to what you have done. Smoking, drinking, you're going to say, oh, I couldn't give it up because it was better than keeping the law. Mm. It's not an excuse. It's a good question. The, yeah. the, the, the fact that you, you, people ask, what is the benefit? Because people like to be rewarded. You mm -hmm. know, they always want to be rewarded for something that they do. But the hard thing about this is when it comes to 
um, keeping with something that your body has to fight. You know, it's either the mind or the heart. You know, so your flesh is constantly fighting. And so it's hard for, uh, for people to, to see the reward past it. It's because they, they, they want to get over something that their body is, is desiring at that very point of time. Amen. Yeah. So, like, I, and when I when I looked at that question, um, there's a verse here um, in Revelations where Jesus um, says, um, Revelation twenty one seven. He goes, "Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children." Amen. Like, what greater reward is that that God says to us that we we will inherit? everything that he has in heaven and will be called his children. Um, and That's like one of the greatest benefits that yeah. people kind of frown upon now, which is, like when I hear that, I think heaven. You know? That's our benefit right there. Amen. Um, I think, um, yeah, just the, the thought of like people like not really seeing that, eh, seeing yeah. that bigger picture. Yeah, yeah. 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 But for us Christians, it's easy because, you know, I mean, we're all trying to aim for that. If that's everlasting life, so, you know, it's pure of God. Yeah. But yeah, I reckon that is the biggest benefit that everyone should focus on, mate. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because you said, um, Joe, just as you were saying, that there's going to be a, a point in time where you will no longer know what sin is because it's. It's something that you're used to doing, you know, um, and that then becomes the unpardonable sin, right? Yeah. It's interesting that there was a there's a friend of mine who's um, who had a relative um, was on their dying bed, mm-hmm. and his question before taking his last breaths were, um, "Does God forgive those who sin the same sin?" And the person said to them, it depends when you know if it's still sin and it's not sin. When it's when you're sinning and you don't know it's sin anymore, that becomes the unforgivable sin. But if you know and it's a burden and you and you know and you ask for forgiveness, then you know God is well to forgive you or Jesus is well to forgive you. Of that sin. <laughs> that's that's a good um you know the way to look at it and reflect on the, the reality of things that are happening now you know we've got to understand for us to reach that unpardonable sin is that we have denied the holy spirit so many times mm. if we've sinned and the spirit is telling you stealing is bad and then we steal again. It's, the Spirit's always telling you the sinning is stealing is bad, or false, false 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 testimony is bad. But you keep doing it until you don't feel it anymore, mm. you, you, and then it becomes a habit that you don't worry. It's 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 normal. Then you've preached the Spirit, and you've killed the Spirit in you, and then it becomes a unforgivable sin. God will not forgive you. So it's important because. Like our um, Ty was bringing here, there's we're trying to do something, but there's that fleshly want in the body that we try to strive for good, but we end up doing bad. The same thing that happened to Paul. In his mind, he wanted to do good, but he ended up doing something that he, he know is not supposed to do. It's the battle between you. It's the battle between your flesh and the spirit. See, if we live by the flesh... We lust for the things of the flesh and the things of the world, but we live by the Spirit. No longer live by the Spirit, but we live no longer with the flesh, but through the Spirit, through who? Christ that liveth in yes. me. Amen. You know, the question, last question, the last time we had, if I'm a believer of God, what assurance do I have? The assurance is First John 5 verse 4, He that is born of God, overcometh the world and that victory is through faith amen, amen? Mm-hmm. so romans 7 verse 7 say paul's writing he said what shall we say then is the law sin god forbid nay i have not known sin 
but by the law. See, if it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't know what sin is. And then he said, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. Now, my question, are you able to keep the law 100%? My answer is nobody can do that. The righteousness falls 490 times a day. Only God can do that, keep the law. And Jesus did that. Amen. He kept the law 100%. And then he added another level. Ooh, and the level that not even us can keep. He said, even not if you covet, that means you did it. Oh, well, I hope there are a lot of people out there that know that's a sin. But Jesus said, even if you look at her, <laughs> or her look at him, <laughs> and you have feelings, that's covet. You've committed a sin. And if you hate your brother or hate your sister, you've committed a sin. And that sin is murder. murder. Mm. See, the level that Jesus put, the level to keep the nobody can keep the law 100%. That's right. But through Jesus, he has intervened. See, in, in the book of uh, um, Romans 6, verse 1. Can we turn to Romans 6, verse 1? Can we read down the first chapter, uh, chapter 6, verse 1, please? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And in verse 2, what does the answer? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? See, and, and then when it continues down, it's a, it's a representative and it's trying to show us a picture of Jesus Christ, the death of Jesus Christ, and he rested into the tomb and his resurrection. It's the same thing as us. When we believe in Jesus Christ, we are buried in that baptism water. The old person, when he goes down and he's resurrected up, is a new person in Jesus Christ. Amen. See, now, do we still live in sin? No. To abound the grace of God? No. God forbid? No. But what? We have to live in Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. And then, uh, what is sin? Can we read out the different kind of sin that is mentioned in the scriptures? There's four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin, of sin, because they believe not on me. See, I want to hammer in the last one. Of sin, because he did not believe in who? Jesus Christ. You don't have faith in Jesus Christ. See the transgression of the law. If you break the law of God, that's sin. Mm -hmm. In all unrighteous things is sin. He said, somebody said, well, it never said about stealing chicken. No, stealing chicken is still a sin. It's unrighteous. How does the person that owns a chicken feel if you steal this chicken? <laughs> or steal this KFC? <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, a lot of people there know what the Sabbath day is. But they what? They don't want to keep it. That's sin. And I want to emphasize this. Sin because you don't have faith in Christ. Amen. So what is sin? You know, it's just, just a few. Hear what the scripture says. And what is the purpose of that? Because in, what does that verse say, please, um, Ty? Uh, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. See, Solomon, the greatest man who have all the wisdom there is and understanding and the knowledge. One probably the wealthiest one. He was a well-known king and he had all the riches, he had all the fame, he had everything. And in that verse there, chapter 12, verse 1, he said, Vanity, 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 vanity is everything. Why? Because he can have all that. 
But they came to the conclusion, let us hear the what conclusion, of the whole matter of his lifespan. What did he say? Fear God. Fear God. And what? Keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man, anthropos, mankind. He's not just talking to the Sabbath keeper or the SDA. He's talking to everybody. Amen. Why is he warning us about this? Can we read verse 14, please? For God, God shall bring, bring every word into judgment, judgment with every secret thing, thing whether it be good or whether it be evil. See, you can hide things from your parents. You can hide things from the, the pastor, the ministers, or, you know, the elders, or, you know, from your friends. But you can never hide anything from God. Amen? Amen. Amen. He knows everything. He sees everything. Because one day we'll be standing before the judgment seat. And we will what? For God shall bring every work into judgment, good or bad. Things that we only think about. Jesus is going to say, what did you think about this? What did you really think you want to do something bad to your brother and this? He, all those things are written down. You can never hide from God. Amen? Amen. So, so it's important to keep the commandments. That's the reason why Jesus said there's a benefit. And what was the benefit? So that we may have the tree of life. life that we may enter into that gate. And then she brought it forth. That we may what? Have everything. The kingdom. And you know when we say Jesus down here. He's telling everybody. Yeah. That's Junior. That's Ty. Letty. To my list. Because we're spreading the word. Spreading his name. Not our names. Glory to be to him. Not us. Amen. And the third question. Can somebody read the third question? Moral laws. <coughs> God's law. Versus ceremonial laws. Moses laws. What are the difference between the two? See, this is where a lot of people get confused because they think just one law the Bible say and it's just God's law. There's so many laws in the Bible. There's law about God's law. That's the moral laws. You got ceremonial law, law of Moses, how it uh, work in the sanctuary, and then you got law about the food and the dress, everything. There's heaps of laws, <clears throat> and even the Jews added so many laws on keeping the Sabbath. But we'll, let's just keep it to the question. Moral laws of God, the Ten Commandments of God, versus the ceremonial laws, Moses' law, what are the difference between the two? We have to see the way in the scripture it says. Can we read in the Malachi 4 verse 4, please? Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. He said, remember the law of Moses when it commanded, who said God commanded to Moses, remember that law. What law? It was not talking about the law of God. And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing, writing the words of this law in a book. Book, remember those words. Book until they were finished. So the law of Moses, remember the law of Moses. How was the law of Moses given? God said, God said, write it down, write it down. Oh, Mo write it down, Moses. So... That's the law of Moses. What about the law of God? Can we read that, please? And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. See the difference? Handwritten from the hand of Moses, the law of God said to Moses, his statue and his judgment, but God, his law, written by the finger of God. Amen. Two tables of testimony, tables of stone, given to Moses. And then the difference, you say, what are the difference? Because you've got to see, there's a law of God and there's a law of Moses. I'm just going to touch basis on it because it's quite a few to explain. But we're just going to keep it simple so that our time, we meet our time. The law of God sets us free. He that know the truth will set you free. The law of God sets us free. But the law of Moses is a burden. Why? The law of Moses, when you sin, <laughs> and then it tells you how many lambs you have to get. And then everybody sees you bringing a lamb to the sanctuary. Eh? If you do it again and you bring all your lambs, well, nowadays we don't do that anymore. But if we did, oh, the richest people in this world will have flocks of sheep, mm. cows and you know goats. They're the ones making money because every time somebody sins, and if we sin 490 times a day, oh, that's a lot of money right there to be made. 
but it's a burden. We don't do that anymore. And then his uh, second said, it was written, the law of God was written by the finger of God. The law of Moses, handwritten by Moses' hand. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then the law of God was placed into the Ark of the Covenant. And the law of Moses was placed on the side of the Ark of the Covenant. See the difference? Law of God and the Ark of the Covenant, the law of Moses on the side. That's in Deuteronomy 3, 31, verse 24 to 26. And it said, the law of God was there before sin. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some people say, no, no, sin happened. No, the law of God was there before sin. And the law of Moses came after sin. Now, the law of God tells us what sin is. The law of Moses is a remedy when you break God's law. Amen? So it goes like this. God said, do not steal. And then I go steal somebody's cow. And then I come to, what does the law of Moses tell me what to do? Then I have to follow what the law of Moses said. Or oh, get sheep, get goats, do an offering. And then I get all that. It's a remedy of what I have broken from the law of God. And then the law of God is eternal. The law of Moses is not. Why? It was nailed on the cross. The law of God is complete. And the law of Moses doesn't complete us. If Jesus said, he summed it up. Love God with all your heart, all your might, all your strength, everything. The same thing, you love your neighbors with all your heart. He summed it up with one word, love. Amen. Amen. And if you search the law of God, and you search the character of God, the law explains and tells us the character of God. And when we see the main thing that's brought out, it's love. Amen. Amen. So there is a big difference between the law of God and the law of Moses. Amen. Amen. Now we come to the last question. Always the lucky last. <laughs> Can somebody read the last question, please? For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to err on their beliefs. Many argue that, that this verse is implying that Christ has ended the law, so there is no need to comply to it. So why are we suspect still upholding God's law? Amen. See, just as we answered question three, it said, what are the difference? There's the moral law, the law of God, and then there's the law of Moses. So we have to see what the question means. See, in Romans 10 verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, righteousness to everyone that believeth. If we go back into the Old Testament, everything was set of a shadow of things to come was set into the sanctuary. And everything in the sanctuary was done of a shadow of things to come was fulfilled for Jesus Christ. So every furniture in there represents Jesus Christ. Every festival they have represents Jesus Christ. Psalm 77 13 is a thy way of God is in thy sanctuary. Amen. So remember how righteousness was uh, done through the Old Testament you break God's law you see what the remedy from Moses law and then you do that and then you bring the lamb you go through the whole tabernacle or the sanctuary stuff and righteousness was obtained from there but it said also in Galatians 3 verse 23 24 that there's a schoolmaster now the old system through the law of Moses will lead us to righteousness but thank to God. Amen for Jesus Christ. Amen. See, we, we break God's law nowadays. And who has come and replaced the old system? Jesus. See, Jesus has taken the sin that we sin. But he's also provided a remedy for us. This blood. Amen. See, then through that new system of school must that we lead us to Jesus Christ through faith. Amen. Amen. I just want to say yeah. um, also 
add to that that I'm thankful for God for bringing Jesus as well um, to be representation in that system because after I pay the rent and buy all my shopping I got no more money to buy any more lamb or or goats or cows to oh, take to the sanctuary. So, so I think he knew what I was going to struggle with <laughs> uh, in my present day. I, I think uh, I'll be struggling there too. Or do I get the lamb, or um, do I pay the rent first? And I'm just going to be twisting forward and back and forward and back and forward and that. Then I know. Or if I keep this up, uh, I will never make it to heaven. Yeah. Mm. Nobody of us will make them. That's why the law cannot save you. But there's a reason it says the bottom question. Why does this that? Why does this church still comply and keep the law of God? We all know because Jesus said, "Blessed are those that keep the commandments, so that they may what enter into the city or heaven." Amen. Amen. Now let's talk about um Colossians two verse fourteen. Can somebody read that, please? Now see what what law is he talking about? Paul's talking about here the law that was doing what hand writing, yeah Moses law, handwritten law was nailed to the cross. We don't have to do what they used to do. Yeah. Get the sheep, get the goat, get the boat. Oh, not the boat, but the cows and all that stuff. See, whoop, that's a burden. That's a heavy burden. And everybody going to see, oh, what, what sin has he done now? Yeah. What sin has he committed now? <laughs> but thanks to Jesus that uh, we live in the kingdom of grace. Yeah. And now, see, Matthew 5, verse 17. Jesus' words. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy the law, destroy the law of God, but what? To fulfill it. So Jesus came to fulfill the law of God. Even when John said, I'm not worthy to baptize you. And he said, I have to fulfill everything. He did fulfill it. He got baptized. The same thing. He fulfilled the law. He did not come to destroy the law. That law that was nailed on the cross is not the law of God. Like I said, are we still allowed to kill today? No. No. <laughs> then why are we saying that's the Old Testament? Why do churches say, oh, the law doesn't mean anything. It's not in the New Testament. No. The law of God still is. Jesus came to fulfill it. And you know what Jesus also said in verse 18. Can we read that, please? For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. See the heavens, the skies you see and the earth pass. Not even a <laughs> or comma or dots of that law will what? Until heaven and earth and everything is being fulfilled. So I'm telling you, we still keep the law of God. And that's why us Seventh Day Adventists that we still uphold God's law was never done away with. It's not a law from the Old Testament alone, no. It's a law of God from the beginning. Not way before the Israelites came. 2,000 years before Abraham came. It's a law of God before sin. And we uphold that law. <clears throat> and then why we have to uphold? Because we're coming to the end times. Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was rough with the woman. Talking about the church. Which church? And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Now it's not fighting the church. But it's fighting the remnant of her seed. And which remnant is that? Which keepeth the commandments of God. And have the testimony of who? Jesus Christ. That? Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Can we read this please? He that says, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. See, so we say that the law is done away with. John's words say, if you know Jesus, and you say you, and you don't keep his commandment, not our words. John's words, he said, you are a liar. And they also added, the truth is not in you. And that's the same word Jesus used for Satan. 
the truth. It's not in you. For Peter, when he said, Oh, don't go and die over there. Satan, he referred to Peter as Satan because the truth was never in him. And if you out there say, Oh, I know Jesus. I worship Jesus. I have a relationship with Jesus. John said, If he said that I know him and keepeth not his commandment, John said, Not our words. John, John. You are a liar. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Joe, yep. um, I had a very interesting conversation um, with a, a visitor of mine and about this exact verse. And he, he gave me um, John 4, verse 23 and 24. He said, But the hour cometh, and not is, when the true worship, worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship God is spirit, and they shall worship him, must him in spirit and in truth. And his argument to me with this was that Jesus is now Sabbath, and that Sabbath isn't a day of worship, and that because of Jesus is Sabbath, that just by knowing him, you are keeping the Sabbath. So are you able to further explain that? Amen. Oh, let's get something correct here. Jesus said Sabbath was given to men and Jesus is Lord of Sabbath. Okay, um, let's good example. Now I'll just use uh, to my ability. Ability is sitting on a chair. Are we all seeing Ability sitting on a chair? Yes. I cannot go to Ability. You're the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Hi chair. Why? He's a living man. Amen. Belletti is not the chair, but he is Lord of the chair. Amen? Amen? So, Jesus, please, Jesus is not a day. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath, and the Sabbath was given to men. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's Mark 2, verse 28 and 27. <clears throat> we'll all go to that. Mark 2, verse 27, 28. Can we all read that, please? And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. See? The Sabbath was made for man. Amen. Amen? And not man for the Sabbath. So... Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Some say I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. What is the Lord's Day? The Sabbath day. That's in the book of Revelation 1, verse 7. So, please, Jesus is not a day. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath day. If Jesus created the earth, and he created all the days... And on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. I cannot say, Jesus, you are a day. Amen? Amen? Just clarify this, please. Jesus is not a day. He's the Lord of the Sabbath day. Mm. But he also said, he seeks for them that worship in spirit and in what? Truth. Truth. Yeah. Not, you know, a lot of churches, just the feelings, the feelings, the hype. The, the emotions, you know, oh, nice music, loud music, big earrings, oh, big lipsticks and all that stuff, all the decorations, but the feelings. But Jesus said for people that worship in, in what? In truth, in the spirit and in truth. So we come on the Sabbath day, we worship the Sabbath day because why? Jesus went on the Sabbath day. We know Jesus, so he went on the Sabbath day. And we got to abide and walk as he walked. See, David said, I delight to do thy will, oh my God. Yeah, thy law is written in my heart. Amen. Jeremiah 31 verse 33, 33 verse 31. In the time it would be written in the tablets, but now it would be written in our hearts, the hearts of flesh. It's in our minds. You don't have to go, what the tablet said. No, it's in here. 
and the Spirit enlightens you, illuminates you, and tell you what the law of God is. And Jesus said to the people that worship Him in the Spirit and the truth. Amen. Amen. And we've got a few verses. And He shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Amen. So, see, if you walk in the truth, you obey God's commandments, you walk in God's commandments, you feel free. There's no sin, there's no burden. There's nothing holding you down. There's nothing weighing you down. Because you're free. I'm not stealing. I'm not worried. I'm not murdering. I'm not worried. I'm not looking around. I'm not worried. Amen. Oh, please don't look around. <laughs> <laughs> I know only one God. My one true God. I don't take his name in vain. I'm not worried. I don't worship any statue or graven image of God. I'm not worried. I'm free. Because I know the truth. And the reason why we keep the commandments. Jesus' words. Can we all read the last verse, please? Second to last verse. If, if you love, you love me, me, keep, keep my, my commandments. commandments. Amen. So how much do you love Jesus Christ? Ty, do you love Jesus Christ? Yes. Is that the reason why you keep his commandments? Yes. Amen. What about you, Billy? Amen. Amen. Liz, is that why you keep his commandments? Are you sure? Amen. What about Jenna? Amen. See, even I keep the commandments because I love Jesus Christ. I know the commandments are not going to save me. Only Jesus Christ saves me. But automatically, when I love Jesus Christ, I walk as he walked, and I keep his commandments. And that's how I know that I'm with Jesus Christ. Why? Because I want to make it to heaven. All of us want to make it to heaven. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. What city? Heaven. Heaven. And that is our hope. Amen. And that is the reason why we come together, share the scriptures, share the gospel, that we may have the right to the tree of life and we may enter into that city. And I'm telling you, the law of God is not done away with. And the reason why we keep it, and the reason why we uphold it, because we love Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I think I'll leave it to you what the program for next week is. <laughs> but is there any other questions? <laughs> Thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, we pray that uh, just reveal your questions, uh, send it through, and then uh, we will try to answer it according to the scriptures, but not to our knowledge and uh, our feelings. Amen. 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 Concludes our segment for tonight. Um, I'd like to thank you, all viewers, for joining in and tuning in to discuss um, the law with us. Um, I'd also like to give a big thank you to Joe, Amen. Minister Joe, for joining us once again. It's a pleasure to have you here, and we are grateful for the wisdom and knowledge that you've shared with us. Um, and if we all bow our heads, and I'll end us off in, in a word of prayer. Amen. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us here today, Lord. We thank you for your wisdom and your knowledge that you have shown upon us, Lord. Thank, thank you. you for using us as a vessel to tell a message mm. for those that are in need, Lord. Mm. Thank you for all that you do, and may you forgive any sin, anything we have um, said wrong in your message. And in your name I pray, amen. Amen. amen.